trained as a Bhan monk, he is an author, teacher and meditation master in the Bhan Buddhist tradition of Tibet. He has thousands of students in more than 25 countries. He is the founder and spiritual director of Ligmincha International. He is Geshe Tenzing Wangil Rinpoche. Tash Dile Rinpoche, it's really nice to have you here with us. Tash Dile Sakinila, I'm very happy to be here, very honored. Rinpoche, we know that you have been teaching for many years now. Could you tell our viewers what your teachings focus on? Well, mainly what I teach is Dharma, uh, trying to help people. And uh, I am doing this for the last 25, 30 years. And uh, one of the reasons I am doing this is also I feel through Dharma teaching, there will be a lot of social benefit, social change can be brought. Uh, Rinpoche, there are many meditation teachers um, who have been speaking on meditation in social media these days. How is your teaching technique different from the others? Or are they all the same? Well, I think um, all the teachers are probably teaching the same thing from at least from the context of Tibetan tradition, Buddhism, Dharma. But I think uh, what I'm trying to do myself is I have grown up in the monastery. I've learned very traditional, very hard way. And so I think the differences in the West is people are not brought up in the same culture, tradition. They don't have the same background. So I'm trying to find a way to really communicate with them on a very personal and social level. We're trying to bring the teachings to hospitals in like MD Anderson Hospital uh, in Houston. We're trying to bring uh, Dharma teachings in the schools, uh, kids. We're trying to bring the teachings between the dialogue between science and spirituality. We're trying to bring inter interreligious dialogue we're trying to bring more different aspect of the society, not really, really like just focusing my student and Dharma only. Um, you have many followers residing in different countries around the world. How do you make sure all your students and followers uh, stay connected with you and the practices of your teachings, particularly at this time of COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, so one of the things that I've been really trying to do for the last 15, 20 years is trying to use uh, internet uh, technology and uh, to communicate with everybody. And especially during this uh, COVID-19 crisis that we are going through globally. And I know many of my students are going through very challenges, challenging moment. In a way, this year was a personal retreat. I was not supposed to teach, it was my personal retreat, but I realized they really, really need it. And the one way to do, even though I'm not traveling, I am doing through online every week uh, on a regular basis. And also I'm inviting other spiritual teachers to help and pray. So I, we are very well connected through internet. Like uh, you have mentioned, you have been streaming live for the last 15 years. What common advice do you give them to overcome physical and mental challenges in today's time? So I think, you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis in some way, <clears throat> I think it's a blessing. In some way it's a hor horrible, but on the other hand, it's also a blessing. I feel it's a, this virus is really teaching us something. Uh, this virus is showing us, us something so before the virus crisis, everybody was too busy on sometimes not necessary things. They fight between each other, not for necessary things, political crisis, religious crisis, social crisis. So I think this somehow, this whole idea of lockdown, I look as a global retreat, personal retreat. And um, during this time, everybody has this opportunity to just be yourself, rest, because that's all you can do, right? Lockdown time. So, so ability to be, be yourself, be at your home, be with your family, be with your own feelings, even they are not necessarily always good things. You have fear, be with your fear, see fears, anxiety, your pains as a doorway to your growth, not as an obstacle and you run away from them. 
But uh, Rinpoche, there are so many people who are being negative these days when it comes to dealing with COVID-19 situation. What advice do you have for them? Yes, of course, you know, it's very difficult. I mean, we all feel, I think everybody, I don't think one person who does not feel that. There are moments we feel very uh, challenged with this experience. We don't know this sense of uncertainty, not knowing what the future is look like. It's difficult, but every difficult, challenging situation in our life, you if you fight with that, you cannot win from it. If you run away from that, it will be faster, it will chase you. But being with it, being open to it, being peace with it, and finding some sense of more solution, creativity, connection uh, with these experiences of challenge, but not trying to run away. Nobody can run away, you know. The virus is faster, <laughs> as we have realized that. Um with the increasing number of COVID cases around the world, many people have developed fear within themselves. You have been doing a lot of teachings on dealing with fear. Can you tell us how an individual should overcome fear regarding the pandemic? Yeah, so just the nature of fear, if you look at the nature of fear, fear is something that feel you feel very first, very physical when it's very strong. And fear is, you know, you can feel physically the fear, ungrounding, unsettling. Then from the breath point of view, you can feel your breath is immediately shortening down. You're breathing shallow. You're not breathing enough. You're, bre you're blocking your breath. And then if you look at your mind, your mind is getting very scattered, dark, and very negative and kind of looking for some problem and criticizing someone. These are physical and mental uh, experiences what happens to us during moment that we are experiencing fear and very often immediately we can get lost in these experiences of body we just feel it and we uh, we f keep on feeling uh, we judge it we and in the speech when it comes out speech we look at outside we criticize someone we blame someone or we fight with someone in the mentally we either we punish ourselves or trying to punish somebody you know immediately we get into this negativity unless you are aware of that so awareness is it's like a bringing a light in the dark room when you bring the light in the dark room you see where the knife is you have to be careful you see where your keys are so if you want you to open some door, you see what your needs are with the light. And you don't need to run away because you can see what it can serve for you. But when you don't see what is what it is, and then you have uncertainty, you have a fear, then you're trying to run, then you don't even know where you're running, whom with whom from whom you're running. So your life is about running away from experiences of yourself and life. So, so recognizing and resting your body into the stillness, just being still, just being still and resting your body in that stillness. And then breathing deep, just taking deep breathing and exhaling whatever your discomfort and anxiety you are feeling. And mentally just resting. So I think the key word here is recognize your stress, tensions, fears in your body, breath, and mind. Let body rest, let your breath rest, let your mind rest, let yourself rest. And during lockdown time, this is what the best thing you can do. If you get more stressed out, more crazy, it will not help you. Uh, Rinpoche, speaking about the lockdown in my previous interviews with other Rinpoches, they mentioned about people being superstitious during this uh, pandemic phase. What do you have to say on that? Superstition in which context? Superstitious regarding uh, coronavirus. People have started to believe whatever they hear about this virus. Yeah. So, so well, I mean, you know, like, a, so... So the media is really like an incredibly a partial media. I feel like even in the United States, like the CNN and Fox News is they're very much biased, uh, very divided. So basically news are very, very difficult to get a right news and authentic news. And so therefore not having true news 
it really brings a lot of anxiety also because people really really, really not knowing uh, you know what in the future is coming and you know this uncertainty is definitely uh, bringing a lot of uh, uh, anxiety in people and exactly that is exactly the point when we feel that where rather than listening to the news too much listen to the news from the right sources but not too much and uh, and because you you know sometimes people are in one day listening so many times news and just keeping up with the number how many people are sick how many people are dead how many all those things does not help very much so a little bit more being with yourself this is an opportunity i mean personally this is what i've been doing you know this is a really opportunity to be home be with the family gardening be creative trying to on, on online trying to help people keeping engage in positive activities that's what people need to do among your students what is the most common concern that they raise and what guidance do you provide them with it's a very simple for me it's a very simple i think uh, every person's story is n exactly the same just a different a slight different versions of it and uh, even though everybody thinks their story is special than any other person's stories, but there's no special story in the samsara. It's the same samsaric stories. So the most common story is the same thing. It's not able to uh, be in oneself, be oneself, not able to, um, you know, ex uh, relate with one's experiences of life so basically running away from your oneself running away from one's surrounding and one's experiences of life because you're looking yourself as some sense of obstacle problem you're looking your experiences which looks like a challenge which looks like a threat which look difficult you feel like there are obstacles of your life you're running away so basically my short advice is do not run away from your life Every, who you are, it's beautiful. Who, what you're experiencing is, it's a door to your, your, your richness, your, your evolving, your growth, your development. So don't run away from your experiences. And even though they look terrible, so every moment is opportunity. Just one example I gave, there was a story about a, a British business, business people going to South, South Africa to do a business. and. Two people goes there and one says, forget about doing a shoe business there because, because nobody is wearing shoes. And the other one says, that is the best place to do the shoe business because nobody is wearing the shoes. So basically same logical reasons. One finds the possibility to do some business. The other finds that's the end of the business. Life is exactly like that. No matter how difficult you look, you see it. If you look a different way, it's your door to your growth. If you're not find a different way to see it and you will stuck with the way you're seeing it, that's called obstacle. So that is the most common experiences and short answer is don't run away from your life. And face all the challenges. Yes, face challenges, yes, be there. Thank you Rinpoche for all the wonderful words that you have shared with us. It is indeed an honor to have you here with us. Thank you for speaking to Tibet TV. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.